Today I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about um, Chen style Tai Chi Chen master Chen Yu. Um, over 20 years ago, I went to China in search of traditional uh, Tai Chi and Kung Fu. Um, and my journeys there took me to uh, Master Chen Yu, who is a 19th generation um, lineage holder of uh, Chen family um, Tai Chi boxing. Um, and over the next few years, from 2002 to 2005, uh, I trained with him in, in Beijing um, full time uh, and became a disciple myself. So I'm a 20th generation um, disciple under Chen Yu. Um, and I thought, you know, why not, I want to chat a little bit about, share my experiences training with him, um, what he taught and um, how his Gong Fu uh, was the same and different to other Chen family uh, Tai Chi and what it was like to train with him and, and what the tr what the the training um, structure and what we worked on while we were there uh, and share a few stories about my time uh, in Beijing. Um, it was fun. I mean, first of all, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work. You know, Chen Yu's stuff, Master Chen, his 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 boxing is it's bitter bitter practice, um, and that comes down to the way he trains and the way the stance is built, um, and the way the shen fa, the body method, and the the jie, he has Beijing accent, right? So jin or jing, the jie uh, was expressed through the body. Um, um, but let me back up a little bit. You know, I was uh, I was introduced to Chen Yu through a friend of mine. Um, Marin Spivak, who teaches, actively teaching Chen Yu stuff uh, in North America and I think other places too, like Europe and whatnot. Um, I don't actively teach. Um, I'm, I, I teach Taoist alchemy, but I don't actually actively teach uh, Chen Yu stuff, and I won't. It's just, it's not, um, um, it's not what I'm, I'm really focused on teaching the Taoist alchemy stuff. And so, um, you know, I ended up in Beijing. I was really interested in learning traditional Kung Fu. I had done some Wushu stuff and I'd done some traditional Tai Chi and Liu Ba Fa uh, in Vancouver, where I'm from. And really just wanted to get more serious with my practice. I wanted to go to the source and uh, really dive into it. And I knew that there was um, a difference between sort of the modern Wushu stuff and traditional Kung Fu. Um, and so I wanted to find a, a good traditional uh, Kung Fu teacher. And so I ended up, I went to Beijing just to be, just to train with Feng Zhiqiang. And Feng Zhiqiang is um, a 18th generation disciple under Chen Fa Ke. Um, so Chen family, uh, Tai Chi. And he he was really good. You know, I had a lot of fun there. I went there in, in I guess it was early 2002. And we were, I was there daily. We we're doing full time daily practice and training with him and some of his his people, some of his disciples like Chen Xiang and and others. And uh, it was over the course of six months there that I bumped into um, Marin, <laughs> and Marin um, was also training with with Feng at the time, as well as some other people. Um, and he, you know, he mentioned. Uh, over, I think we were having uh, lunch somewhere in some back alley in Beijing. Um, he mentioned this fellow Chen Yu, and I'd never heard of him at that point. Um, no one really had. Uh, you know, if you did a search on the internet at that point, there wasn't, you didn't find anything. Um, and, and I just hadn't heard of him. Now, Chen Yu, just in case you don't know, he's the son of Chen Zhao Kui, and Chen Zhao Kui is the son of uh, Chen Fa Ke. And so that's how the lineage um, was passed on. Also, there's also other people like Chen Xiao Wang and, and some other people as well. Um, and, uh, you know, Marin said, this guy's really good and I'm looking for him. <laughs> and, you know, he, he couldn't find anything online. There's no phone books in China. It doesn't work that way. Uh, and so he just, he was just like, he had been for three years, he had been going to China trying to track him down going to different parks, asking people, you know, if they'd heard of him or whatever, um, until eventually he found him. He found him and uh, he gave him a call, uh, got his phone number, gave him a call, and he was teaching. 
Uh, and so Marin's like super excited. Um, he's like, dude, uh, this guy's really good. And so I'm going to go check him out. So he went and checked him out first and met up with him. And, uh, and so, uh, Chen Yu decided to uh, take him on, um, initially as a student, uh, and then, and then quite fairly soon after as a disciple. Uh, and so Marin just gave me a call and he's like, you know, do you want to come along? And at that point, Feng Zhixiang wasn't teaching a lot. Yeah. He, he was older, you know, he had already taken his Guaman deeds, which is sort of your closed door disciples. So he wasn't taking any other disciples. He had a lot of disciples there. They were doing a lot of the teaching. Um, we were doing, you know, it was, it was, it was good. It was really good stuff. Uh, but yeah, I wanted something a little more intense. I wanted to really dig into it and, and train and train in, you know, that really systematic traditional way. And Chen Yu was young, you know, he was at that point, he was in his, what, 30s, I get late 30s, maybe. And he was, he was ready to, uh, to make his mark in the world and, and build up some, some people. So I went along, um, and, uh, it was, it was fun. It was, um, you know, it was daily, every day, uh, we would get together at that point, um, seven days a week, uh, for a few hours every day. Um, and then I would practice a few hours on my own. Um, so uh, the class was, um, the class was, was good. It was intense. You know, we, we worked on a lot of, uh, we, well, let's, let's see. So Chen Yu's method, I think the way he teaches and the way that it was just different from, uh, from say other, um, especially the modern Wushu people, uh, is he would show move, right? And then he would show you the, the jir. The, the, the force, like the power and the force and how it comes out of the body. He would show you the shen fa, how the spine works. Um, and then we, he would show you how you apply that, that move, right, straight out of the set um, in different contexts. So he would show you how to apply it in, usually, usually in a push hands context and then a sancho context, so more live sparring type stuff. Um, and he would show you how it works, right? And it was, every time he showed it, it was just like, it was, it was just, you know, enlightenment. Like you saw it and you real, you just saw how the internal mechanics and the power comes out and is applied. It was very, very practical in a way that I'd never seen Chen Family Tai Chi, um, taught before, right? Usually it was, you know, you do some form practice and then do some push hands and maybe some central like some some more sparring stuff maybe right but this was it was all integrated fully integrated into the training and it was just finding that tier finding that force um and then seeing how it comes out in different ways uh, and then just having fun with it in live context with with a training partner a sparring partner um it was good it was really fun so i think that's probably the big one of the biggest difference i saw the other thing with 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 what he was teaching is the um there's a sequence in how the move and how the the moves are developed over time by a practitioner so there's not one ideal way of doing a move or doing the form there is beginner you know intermediate and advanced there's many different ways of just breaking it down right so initially you would just get the basic move um and that involved the uh the the stance work the and his stance was different from any other chen style i'd done before um you know i told him about my teacher before and he he knew the teacher uh and you know I, he said so you learned some stuff before i'm like yeah i learned from this person it wasn't feng jutang it was someone else he knew feng, he knows feng he has a good he had a really good relationship with feng Master Fung, is someone else. Um, I won't name names. And he said, "Oh, that's that's just different. Like it wasn't even like he would critique it as good or bad. It was just like, no, that's different. That's just performance, you know, pretty stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, he didn't even want to consider it. And so, um, and then practically, when I was working on the form, right away he started correcting my stance in a way that was just it it it." It was grueling. It was bitter. Um, he, the way my weight was distributed and came down in, in through the pelvic bowl and then down into the feet. Uh, and the way the feet and knees articulated the movement was 
very different. It was much more controlled. Uh, a lot of uh, other Chen stuff that I'd seen and practiced, the, kind of the knees kind of flop around a bit and it's not that exact. His was exact to the millimeter, exactly like where everything is positioned, the angle of your feet, ankles, knees, hips, how it moves. Um, and, so, and that was just the basic stuff, right? So very, very clear idea of how to build um, the frame on, um, from there. And, and then you just get the basic moves. Um, and then you work on um, getting the, the Shen Fa. So Shen Fa was also another, uh, sorry, body movement. So the body method um, was another key, uh, kind of keystone um, of of his method, right? So you needed to have the body method. And by body method, basically it's how the whole body works together. But more than that, there's a, there was a distinctive way that his spine would move, would articulate, uh, and the arms and feet would be driven by that. Um, so the biggest thing you can say is sort of like the lower lumbar spine was doing this, was kind of doing this, this rotation spiraling and then the upper thoracic would also be doing it uh, would also be doing a different rotation so you have these kind of different rotations going on which would go out and which would generate the force which would be expressed through the hands and when he did this the the shoulders didn't move the hips didn't move it was all spine it was all spine the way um, those spirals came out through the body uh, it was incredible to watch uh, he, he first had to get the basics of the move, and then we go through this, the form again from the beginning and start working on the on the sh on the shenfa, the body method, to get that coming out. And he would start showing it, and you're like, wow! You could just it, the, the spirals became so um, distinctive, so visible, so clear how everything was built together, and that's something he's never shown publicly. Um, it's, it's, it's not on YouTube. It's I've. Um, it's it's something that he kept for students who were there at that time. Um, and then once you learn that, once you've learned to lie, like br the the practices come out of your body and you're able to do that, then again you br you rein it in so it's not so visible. It becomes more and more internal, uh, and then you just play around with that. Um, so that's another distinctive way that he he trained. Um, that he trained us and the structure of the training was set up uh, in that way. Um, yeah, and he was, he was a very interesting guy to hang out with. He, he definitely had a sense of humor. Uh, he was kind of, a, he, was, he was a rough, a little rougher. He was definitely rough around the edges. Um, you know, he wasn't a very scholastic type guy. He was a gung fu guy. He was, he was about fighting. That's what he did, you know, in his, his, his spare time, he was a bodyguard for, you know, who knows who uh um and like that was what he did you know for him it was it's chen it's boxing um and he you know he he had a lot of love and respect for his father obviously and then chen fa ke so chen jiao kui and chen fa ke and it's interesting the way he talks about tai chi was just different from other people um it was a much more traditional way um and in that is he didn't talk about styles he didn't, he didn't talk about Chen style and Yang style and blah, blah, blah. He also didn't talk about frames. So in the, in the Chen family, in the Chen Tai Chi world, there is, you know, it's old frame, new frame, small frame. Um, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't like those distinctions. He's like, there's just my, my father's boxing, right? That's what I'm teaching. I'm not teaching Xin Jia. I'm not teaching new frame. I'm teaching my father's boxing. And we talked about other, Tai Chi people he just used their name like that's it's not young style Tai Chi it's just you know that guy um whatever his name was you know or the, or you know if he's from the Yang family great and that matches with research I did um I did my MA I for my master's um I did a, a research project for my thesis master's thesis looking at uh, Tai Chi and the relationship with um internal alchemy and the literature of the late Qing dynasty and that matches that. Like those people back in the day, they didn't use the word style. I mean, for a while there, they're using the word shirt, which means clan, 
right? And then shirt, which means style. It sounds exactly the same, a different character, right? So there was, you know, like the Chen family boxing, right? Or Chen's boxing, you know, possessive, right? The, the S is possessive there. Um, or this person's boxing. And he also didn't like saying, well, that's Tai Chi, but that's not Tai Chi. He didn't, he didn't really make those kind of distinctions. There's just this, there's different kinds of juror that you're working at, right? Um, he would talk about Muay Thai just as easily as you talk about another Tai Chi person. I mean, he was, he was, he was much looser in how he defined these concepts, right? Um, I think from my research, uh, the concepts, these sort of stratified different styles of Tai Chi came about in the 50s, um, in China when the physical education, um, institute was trying, was, was, um, creating uh they were creating modern wushu right and so what they did was they said okay well there's these these styles there's these people that do it they have these last names we'll call them these styles before then if you look at literature in the republican period they did use clans you'd have the like the the chen clan style or whatnot anyways uh it's more <laughs> academic stuff isn't really that interesting um yeah, so we had a lot of fun. There wasn't a lot of people training with him at that point. It was under, you know, it was se there were several people there that show up every day. Um, he had a number of different Chinese disciples and then Marin and myself. Um, Marin definitely um, more advanced than I am in terms of the practice. He's very dedicated. Um, that's his thing. Um, and he's really, really gone for it to learn it, master it, and now sharing, uh, sharing it. Whereas I was mo more interested, uh, became more interested in Taoist internal alchemy. And that's, that's the path I'm on now. But we had a lot of fun. It was, it was hard work. Um, very bitter practice. There was a lot of, uh, you know, um, a lot of, <laughs> we had fun too after the class, you know, we, at least once a week we'd go and have a big, uh, a big, a uh, big meal together and uh, it usually involved a fair bit of baijiu, uh, which is the local alcohol they have there, which is quite strong. Um, you know, so, you know, he, he was very much a, a rough martial arts gong fu guy. You know, he, he would smoke his cigarettes. Like, he, as he was teaching us push hands or, or, you know, applications, he'd like put his cigarette in his, you know, his mouth and kind of, like, hey, hey, come here. Okay, it's like this. And he just throw you, you know. Uh, really kind of a fun character. Um, big heart, too. And underneath that rough exterior, he had a, he had a good heart. And he was very, very good to me he really took care of uh took care of me um and yeah we'd have fun go out and just you know drink and buy geo after class and oh man that was nasty um and so very much a part of sort of that kung fu chinese kung fu culture um in terms of what he did and who he who he was uh, and he's still you know he's still he's still alive he's still um he's i believe he so he, unfortunately he had a stroke um, and that's not from his practice. It, it's from some other lifestyle and more, some other, other things, right? Um, his, 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 the Tai Chi is very good. Uh, his son is, is, I believe is teaching in, in Beijing. And I remember his son when he was, you know, very young. Um, he would hang out in class. I think he was like eight or nine years old and he would come out and hang out with us. He never really, he, he didn't want to practice that much at that point, but he was, he, he did, he did, he did, he did practice. He did practice. You could tell he didn't want to, but <laughs> he did it. Um, it'd be, um, and he's in, he's in Beijing as well. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was very intense. We also did, uh, weapon forms, some weapons, not too much. We, we worked a lot on Ilu and Arlu, the first road and the second road. Um, and then we did a lot of spear practice. Um, you know, the big spear more for working on power and, and, and getting that stuff. We also did, you know, Tai Chi Chiu, the ball and a lot of other little things. It was fun. We, we, every day was outside, you know, outside his apartment. There's a little courtyard there in, in front of his, uh, in front of his, where he lived. And we just go and, and, you know, snow, rain, wind, whatever. We were there. Um, we were there. If it got too nasty, we might go inside, um, and do some, push and stuff in his, in his apartment where he lived with his, you know, his wife and kid. Um, but a very generous teacher. He really wanted to pass on what he had learned. I think the problem with his stuff, the hard thing about it is it's hard. It's, it's not easy to practice. The, the frame is hard. It's, it's, you know, the Gongfu Jia. It's, it's like this old, 
um, it was the, the frame that was used within the Chen family. It was rarely taught publicly. Um, and it's not for health. It's for fighting. And it's, it's really challenging to do. And so, um, you know, it wasn't easy. I think that's, you know, if you want to go study that lineage, uh, you got to really want to do it. It's not kind of something that you're just going to kind of pick up and, and do it, you know, a day a week and, and get some minor health benefits out of. It's something you really got to, you got to be committed to, um, to dive into it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty neat stuff. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's very, very rich. And I think that's what I like about a lot of these traditional lineages is just the richness of the training and the knowledge that is that is built within the that is within the lineage right uh so you get this sort of more modern lineages which is just form work um you know it's it's okay i guess but you're mi there's missing so much there's just so much it's not there um you know or they try to get from other places like maybe to you know toisho or sancho from other places sanda now i guess is, is what everyone's into um but in the traditional lineages if it was a complete traditional lineage it's all it's all it, it was all there um and it was just amazing to see uh there's also some some secret stuff <laughs> secret forms and, and whatnot um a lot there's just a lot there um you know I, I i miss that time i have so many fond memories of hanging out with with the people i trained with um and it was a really fun time in my life it was hard but uh it was it was really uh kind of exciting too um and so yeah those are my ex i just wanted to share my experiences with uh with master chen yu um and 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 hopefully you can learn something about the uh you know how he did how he did it and maybe compare it to to your own lineage uh if you're a tai chi person or um you know whatnot anyways uh thanks bye bye